Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. On today's video, we're going to be talking all about Imbolc and how you can celebrate it for yourself. <music> Imbolc is a festival that falls really early in February. Different people will celebrate it at different times, but usually it's celebrated on either the 1st or the 2nd of February in the Northern Hemisphere and the 31st of July in the Southern Hemisphere. Imbolc falls halfway between the winter solstice and the spring equinox, and it's at this time of year that life is slowly starting to seep back into the world. The word Imbolc has lots of believed definitions. Some people will say it means in milk, use milk or in the belly, which is a pretty good representation for this time of year. We're starting to see the first signs of life, but it's not quite ready to go into bloom just yet. We are starting to see a few flowers like snowdrops and crocuses, and we're starting to see a few buds reappearing on the trees, but one of the biggest changes at this time of year are the animals, where we start seeing lambing season and all the baby animals running around and it's got to be one of the cutest times of year. Imbolg is one of the four Celtic fire festivals. This includes Imbolg, Beltane, Lunasa and Samhain. Though there are many different celebrations for many different cultures and traditions that happen at this time of year. Imbolc is also known as Bridget's Day, because for many people it is a celebration of the goddess Bridget, also known as Bride. Now I'm going to refer to her as Bridget for the duration of this video, but do know that she does go by many different names. Now Bridget is an Irish goddess. Many people consider her to be a triple goddess, having different facets and different associations depending on which form of Bridget you're working with. For many though, she is associated with healing, the hearth, fertility, blacksmithing and poetry, among many other things. It is important to note though that you don't necessarily have to work with or even acknowledge Bridget to take part in celebrations surrounding this time of year. Every pagan, Wiccan and witch is going to celebrate differently. Not everyone is going to work with and connect with Bridget, and so there are many different ways to celebrate this season. Some people will use this festival to honour Bridget, and use that as their focal for their workings. Other people will want to connect with this season as the start of new life and new growth, where the buds and the animals are starting to wake up from their slumber, and other people will choose to work with this festival as a solar festival, a fire festival, so that you are calling forth the energy of that sun, of bringing in the longer days and the shorter nights. And so what you choose to work with is going to very much vary depending on your style of practice, your particular beliefs, and also what you feel most comfortable with. Now, there's so many different things that you can do for this holiday. I have quite a long list here. Some of them are going to be more suitable for people who are more private in their practice than others. Some things are going to be better for more group festivals. So just bear that in mind, but hopefully you'll find something in this that you can do. A super simple way to celebrate this Sabbath. Wow, that is a lot of S's is to celebrate the sun's return. Yule has come and gone. That's where the days are shortest and the nights are longest. Now we're really starting to see the improvement in the light. The nights are getting less dark. The days are starting to get longer. And although it might not seem this way, especially given the fact that we're about to have a snowstorm in a few days, it is definitely going to start getting warmer slowly and gradually from here as life starts returning. Because of this, many pagans, Wiccans and witches will celebrate the sun's return. There are many different ways to do this. You can watch the sunrise or the sunset on Imbolg, depending on what time you have available to you. You can also honour this by lighting a candle or turning on the lights in your home for just a few minutes while you're watching it or just after you've experienced it. Another good way of doing this is at sunrise, open your windows to allow some of that solar energy into your life. And that way you can really imbue your space with this positive, uplifting solar energy. Because although the days right now might seem really short, they are starting to get longer. You can, if you like, also carry out a spell or ritual at sunrise or sunset if you do want to focus on the solar aspect of this festival. As with every other Sabbath celebration, you can also have a feast, or if not a feast, then at least a Sabbath themed meal. You can do this by yourself with just a small amount of food or just a small drink, or you can do this with an entire coven, a family, a friendship group, whatever it is that you would like to do. There are a few foods and drinks that are really associated with the Imbolc season. What you choose to use is going to depend on your diet and also the aspect of this festival that you really want to work with. 
For many people historically, and for people living today, this time of year is really important when it comes to farming, especially when it comes to livestock. And so any products that contain dairy are really significant. Now, of course, not everyone is able to have dairy or chooses to. So many people will choose to have milk or cheese or some kind of dairy product. You can also substitute this for dairy-free alternatives if that suits you better. You can also work with the fiery solar energy of this season, in which which case you might want to eat something hot and spicy, whether that is spiced wine or whether it's some spicy food. The idea of the spice is really significant when it comes to connecting with that solar energy. And if you are more connected to the land and you really want to focus on that energy, then including some root vegetables can be really useful. We've got to remember that going back through history, especially those who celebrated this festival within rural or agricultural communities, you really would be living off your reserves at this time of year. Root vegetables preserve really, really well, and so it's something that people may well have been eating well into the winter and into the early spring as long as they had the ability to do so. So you can go to your local farmer's market, you can get hold of in-season crops that you can be eating to more deeply connect you with this Sabbath season. Offerings are also really commonplace at this time of year. Now, offerings can mean very different things to different people, and it's going to depend on who you're giving an offering to or what you're giving an offering to. You can give an offering to Bridget, and oftentimes this could be music, it could be dance, it could be poetry, it could be a craft in some way, such as blacksmithing or knitting or sewing, whatever it is that you like to do. You can also burn candles and give incense, you can give a little bit of milk, anything like that is a really good offering. You can also give offerings to the earth by giving a little bit of milk to the earth or giving some energy to the earth. You can also give offerings to the Fae. Just make sure you're being careful with the kind of animals that are around. And if in doubt, simply give music and thanks and dance because those are really good options. You can also give offerings to wildlife and to nature. Depending on where you live, the winter might be incredibly harsh. And there's gonna be a lot of animals out there who are maybe really struggling. So if you do have any birds around that are really struggling to find food, give them some food, ideally something that's gonna be really good for them, and then give that as an offering. This could also double as an offering to the earth or to deities, spirits, or ancestors, depending on who they are and what they connect with. Especially if a deity is deeply connected with nature, then giving an offering in the form of helping wildlife and the environment could be a really good option. If, however, you do want to connect more deeply with Bridget at this time of year, there are a few additional crafts that you can do, one of which is creating a Bridget doll. These are also known as corn dollies, bride dolls, and brie dolls. And these are essentially corn husk dolls. If any of you have made these before, you'll likely recognize them, and some of you will likely have made them at Lunasa, one of the other Celtic fire festivals. If you have created one at Lunasa, you can use the same doll again in these celebrations, but if you've never made one before, it could be a really good time to make one or to buy one from a small crafter, preferably someone who makes them by hand. These dolls are a representation of Bridget, and they're often brought in at this time of year, and they're often given a small bed. This bed is often handmade. It could be a basket with some blankets in it. It could be a small dollhouse bed if you have one of those available to you. This could also be a really good thing to do with children, and you essentially bring the doll in and you lay her on the bed somewhere significant and close to the center of the home, such as on a fireplace or in the kitchen or in the living room, where there's a lot of warmth and love and happiness, and in many cases, people. Now, some people will leave her in a space where there is light continuously for the day and night of Imbolg. Other people will simply have her somewhere safe and secure. This is just one way of working with a corn doll or a Bridget doll. You can also dress these dolls in white fabric and also some spring flowers or the first green of the year. She can then be placed in the bed, or in many cases, she's actually placed above the front door. Some people will nail her into the wooden lintel above a front door if you have one. Other people will simply place her around or near the front door to try to bring in that positive, fertile, abundant energy that Bridget is so famous for. Some people will also choose to chant or repeat several phrases or sentences as they're bringing the doll inside. One example of this is to say, Bridget is come, Bridget is welcome three times as you're bringing the doll inside or when placing it in the Bridget bed. 
Now you can choose the wording as you see fit and you might want to create your own phrases as a blessing to Bridget as you bring her inside. All is good. It just depends on what you feel comfortable with. And if you don't like saying it verbally, you can say it internally as well. Another craft that you can do to honor Bridget and to also bring in protection and abundance is to create a Bridget cross. Now I'm hoping I'll be able to find a picture to be able to put on the screen. These are often created with reeds, but you can also use paper if that's all you have available to you. There are a few ways of making this that are available online. I'll see if I can find some resources that I will link in the description box. These crosses can be used in many ways. For many people, they will imbue these crosses with the energy of this festival. Other people will call out to Bridget for aid in manifesting their desired intentions to offer them protection, abundance, fertility. Sometimes they are placed above front doors in order to offer protection to the house. They may be carried to bring the energy of Bridget and this festival with you wherever you go. For other people, they will place them under mattresses or under the bed as a way to aid them with conception. So it really depends on what you need but this is a good option and you can adapt it depending on what you want. So change the placement, change the intention, depending on what you're after. Many times Bridget is represented as wearing a green cloak or a mandal. Now this is something that you can create yourself to bring in healing and protection for the year to come. You can use a full-sized green cloak, you can use a half cloak, you can use a piece of green fabric or strips of green fabric. You simply need to be able to place them outside on in bulk to be imbued with the energy, ideally somewhere where the wind and the breeze is going to blow through them. The idea behind this is that these items are then imbued with that healing protective energy that you can add into your day-to-day -day life as the year goes on. You can use the same items time and time again and simply place them on you or in pockets when you need that healing and protection. Or if you would like to, you can use these strips in other rituals. You can burn them, you can use them in knot magic, you can use them in pouches and dolls and other spells. And then in the following year, you can use a new piece of green fabric. So you're using a new fabric every single year, but that really depends on how you're going to be using it. This is also a good time to be setting up an altar. What you choose to place on the altar or who you choose to honour is very much going to depend on which aspect of this celebration you're going to be focusing on. As with everything else in this list, just bear that in mind. You can set up an altar to the goddess Bridget. You can set one up to earth and to nature. You can set one up for the air element as well, and I'm going to be talking about that a little bit more later. You can also set one up as a Sabbath altar in general, and that's what I'm going to be doing for my altar today. Now, there are many different things that you can put on the altar, but here are some examples for things you can add if you would just like to do a Sabbath altar in general. Colors such as white, red, orange, yellow, gold, green, and also pastel shades are really good at this time of year. If you can include any representations for a goddess or the sun, that's also a good option, depending on which aspect you're focusing on. You can include some spring flowers, including snowdrops, crocuses, and daffodils if they're out, but try not to pick too many of them if you are going to do this. You can also include artwork of these items, tarot and oracle cards that represent them, whatever feels right for you. Candles to bring in that fiery solar energy are a good option, as well as small sheep figurines or sheep images if you are wanting to connect with the land. You can also place on the altar a small besom to represent cleansing and clean energies going forwards. You can also include on the altar your Bridget doll, if that is something that you would like to connect with more going forwards. On my altar, I kind of did an assortment of everything, mostly because I like to imbue all aspects of this celebration. I am gonna include in a brief time-lapse of me setting up my Sabbath altar that might give you some inspiration for what you can place on yours.
If you don't want to set up a whole altar space, you aren't able to, or you simply don't want to, there are other ways that you can imbue this energy into your everyday life. You can wear the colours of the festival. This is a really good way of doing it. This could be your makeup, your nail polish, your socks. It could be the clothes that you wear. It could be different things that you have around you. Even something as simple as changing the background on your phone is a really good way of adding that energy into your life. After all, there's no one way to celebrate any of these Sabbaths. So do what you feel most comfortable with and do what suits you and your way of life. Bringing in any of these representations into your life is also a good option. So if you would like to add a little besom onto your desk, if you would like to carry around some crystals such as amethyst, turquoise, garnet, these things are really good at this time of year. You can also simply light candles as well, as mentioned, that's a really good simple way of celebrating the Sabbath. Next up we have a spring clean, or more specifically a spring clean and cleanse. There's a reason that the phrase spring cleaning is so popular. Many people around this time of year want to get everything in their life sorted again. They're having a fresh start, they want to clear out the old, bring in the new, and witches, pagans, and wiccans will do the same, both physically and energetically. So if you do have things that you want to clean out, whether you want to clean out your cupboards or your fridge, do you want to clean out that junk drawer that you have been stuffing stuff into for the last year? I know you have one. Everyone has one. Maybe you even have a junk room or a garage or a shed. This could be a good time to clear out the old, bring in the new, donate anything that you can to charities, try to reuse and repurpose as much as you can. But I think at the end of the day, we have to accept that some things simply aren't usable. And now is a good time to get rid of them. That includes the physical, and the energetic. If you can, it's a really good time of year to do both some personal cleanses and also some home cleanses. One of the easiest way to cleanse your home is to open all of the windows, let the wind and the breeze and the fresh air into your space so it clears everything away. It clears off the cobwebs physically and energetically. This is a super simple way of doing it. You can also smoke cleanse, you can cleanse with salt water, you can cleanse with cleansing sprays, you can use some incenses such as frankincense and myrrh, these are really good options, as well as rosemary, which is my personal favourite. You can do some sound cleanses, whether that is a YouTube video or whether that is actual sounds and music that you are playing yourself, whatever way works best for you. It really is entirely personal, but one traditional way to do it at this time of year is to use a bed or a broomstick. Many people will have these in their homes or you can get mini ones, like mini mini ones, or you can buy a special ritual besom or broomstick for this purpose. But really whatever works for you, if you have a garden center, they'll probably carry broomsticks that you can use for this purpose. Typically I will work top to bottom, back to front when it comes to cleansing my house and that way I can really get all of that energy out but the main goal here is to just cleanse that space. So whatever method works best for you, I will say if you are gonna be cleansing with a besom and it is quite delicate, cleanse about two inches away from the floor because it's an energetic cleanse more than a physical cleanse. So you can get rid of all of that energy without potentially damaging an expensive ritual broom in some cases. If you are particularly green thumbed and you do want to get started on your planting, now could be a good time to plant some seeds, particularly if you do have have a greenhouse or some kind of heated space like a potting shed that can stay warm during this time of year. Now of course not everything is going to be suitable to be potted or seeded at this time of year but if you do have any crops or plants that you would like to grow that are suitable for planting at this time it could be a good time to really get started and it helps us take that first step back out into nature which is something that is really significant at this time of year. If you'd like to you can also plant your seeds with intention. Focus on a specific goal that you would like to manifest and as you place that seed into the soil, energize it with your intention and then allow your energy to manifest as that plant grows. You can also do some divination in there. Ask a question, plant the seed. If the seed goes really quickly and strongly, you know that it's a yes. If your plant dies slowly and doesn't grow very well, then that will be a no. This is better suited for more long-term questions, but it is a good way of incorporating divination into your green witchcraft. I know that it's really easy to want to stay inside, under the blankets, not moving. Believe me, I am guilty of this right now. I am getting up later and later and later because I'm just so cozy and warm and toasty and I just don't want to get out of bed. And I know that quite a lot of people are finding it really hard to get out of bed at the minute because it is just so cozy and warm and you don't want to go outside. 
but it is a really good thing to do to celebrate this Sabbath season. Get out into nature as much as you can, even if that's just your back garden, whether it's a local park or a local woodland, or maybe you want to go deep into the depths of nature, whatever is safe for you to do. Be aware of your surroundings while you're out there. Look out for any starting signs of life that you can see, any flowers that are just peeking their heads out of the soil, any trees that are just starting to grow buds. These things are really significant. Feel the air, feel the coldness of it, feel the snow or the ice or the trees, whatever it is that you have around, and really root yourself into nature for just a moment. You don't have to be out there for very long, you can be out for as long as you want, but just having that chance to breathe in some cold, fresh air is really good at this time of year to ground us back down again. It could also be good, if you do have access to it, to go to a local stream, a spring, or a well. For many people, wells are deeply connected with land spirits or to specific localized energies and deities. For many people, fresh running water is connected with the goddess Bridget, and so they'll leave an offering in this place. This could be a small flower, this could be a stone, this could be an offering of energy, this could be cleaning things up, this could also be simply saying, saying a word of thanks over that well. These are all really significant, really small things that you can do. You don't have to make large grand gestures. Just being there, being present, saying a few words of thanks is really all you need to get started with these deities and with these spirits. If you don't want to work with Bridget, you don't have to work with Bridget. There are many different spirits associated with water that you may want to connect with. You can work with the elementals, you can work with fair folk, you can work with land spirits, with water spirits, you can work with deities and spirits of place, depending on what it is you have in your local area. And also, if you do work with the saints, there are often many saints associated with wells as well, so that could be a good option for you. Divination is also really good to do at this time of year. You can do it for the entire year to come, but typically I would do it from now till the next Sabbath. You can use really any form of divination that you like, but because it is a fire festival, fire scrying is really popular. Another good thing that you can do is to have a fire pit or a bonfire. It is a fire festival, after all. This is largely done with big groups or covens. And at these festivals, you might do spells and rituals, you might be manifesting change, you might be connecting with Bridget. Some people will place their goals and their ideas into the bonfire or into the fire pit to manifest in the year to come. They might burn incense, this is another good option. And all of these things can help manifest change, growth, progress, after all, fire really is the definition of energy, of action. And so it can be really good to do at this time of year. If you don't want to do this with a large fire pit, you can do this with a fireproof container and a candle, as well as some fireproof tongs. Write your intention on a piece of paper, light it on fire, place it into the cauldron, return this to the earth or into water as a way of completing that circle and manifesting your desired outcome. That is a good option, just make sure you have fire safety equipment regardless of how big a fire that you are planning on having. Imbolg is also really popular for having initiations, particularly those into groups or covens. Many people will also conduct self-dedication rituals at this time of year to help enter them into witchcraft, wicca, or whatever tradition it is that you are connected to. This is something that is pretty commonplace, especially within Wiccan circles, but you don't have to be Wiccan in order to do this. You can dedicate yourself to your practice, to a deity, to a spirit, to a religion, whatever it is that you like at this time of year, and it's all about new starts, new growth, new developments. I know that for many people, they will start their year and a day, just before Imbolg, and then they will be initiated on Imbolg. But I think this is going to depend on the coven and the specific group of people that you are working with. But that is an option. And if you are wanting to start something new, Imbolg is a great time to initiate yourself into that. It can just be a hobby. It can be a new sport. It can be a class that you want to take. Maybe you want to learn Italian or Spanish, or you want to learn to play the piano or the harp, or you just want to paint more or get outside more or just do something a little bit more. Now is a great time to get started with that. And lastly on this list, we have spells and rituals. Now this time of year is going to mean different things to different people. So I have a few things that you can carry out at this time of year. You can do large bonfire rituals where you're calling upon the element of fire and the elementals as well as the fiery aspect of Bridget to manifest change. 
You can do some water rituals where you are cleansing yourself, doing a cleansing shower or a cleansing bath. You're working with the element of water, particularly if you are connected to the idea of spirits and wells or spirits and springs. This is a great time to be doing anything like that. Divining or scrying into fire or water is really popular. You can also cleanse away negativity from your space with water or simply whisper your secrets and the things that you wish to change into the water and then allow it to be washed away into the earth. The air element is also closely associated with the in bulk season or more specifically with spring and so you can do lots of air element rituals and associations. Some of my favorites are to do an air element cleanse where you get out onto a windy hill, you imagine all of the energy that you want to get rid of coming to the surface and then when a strong gust of wind comes it blows it all away. You can also whisper your dreams and goals into the wind and have that active force drive it onwards to help manifest change. These are all really good options, but you can also do things that are a little closer to home. You can light some incense that fits your intention, something that manifests a goal. You can write it on a piece of paper, place it under your incense burner, light that incense and allow it to burn down. And then when it's done with, you can either allow the air to blow that incense away, you can return it to the earth, you can place it into black salt, whatever it is that you like. There's lots of different options. You also have the option of doing some blessings at this time of year. It is a good time to be doing blessings protections and cleanses, as well as starting with some healing magic. So there are lots of options for things that you can do. So those are just a few of the things that you can do to celebrate in bulk. And I hope that at least one of these piques your interest, whether you want to celebrate it for yourself or just do a little bit more research on it. I would love to know what you're doing for Imbolg this year. Are you setting up an altar? Are you doing a group ritual? Are you going out to a sacred well? Are you doing some air magic? Let me know in the comment section. I'm really interested to hear what you are going to be doing and hopefully it will give some additional inspiration to everyone who's looking for new things that they can do this time around. With that being said, if you did enjoy this video, feel free to give it a like. It means a lot to me and it tells me that you enjoy this content. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chit chat with the community, feel free to post them down in the comment section. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I try to post magical content every single week. I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you have a marvelous magical day and I will see you in the next video. Bye. It has been approximately two weeks since I last filmed and I feel like I've not filmed in years. Like, which do I prefer? Do I prefer the moons? Do I prefer the dangly danglies? I'm gonna go for dangly danglies. I feel like I've not filmed in ages. I filmed just before New Year's. It's now the 12th of January and it just feels so alien to me. Like, I came to film and my entire filming space was covered in stuff because basically everything from Christmas just got dumped on the sofa. It was my I'll sort it later pile and you know what happens with I'll sort it later piles. Wow, that's a tongue twister. They never get sorted. And so um, two weeks passed and there was still loads of stuff on my sofa. And so I just had to like deal with it all this afternoon. So... Yeah, how is everyone? How was everyone's New Year's? I hope that you didn't get too drunk. I hope that you enjoyed yourself. I actually had a really nice New Year's. It was really chill. We watched the fireworks. It was just really nice. I don't really do anything fancy for New Year's though because I'm lazy and that seems like way too much effort. And for me, getting through Christmas is bad enough. I don't wanna have to think about celebrating New Year's as well. That's just like too much work. So. We are back today with another video. Obviously, you know that you've already watched it. I, however, haven't. So let's see how this goes. Um, so today I've scripted out a whole video and I just have to hope that I can get through it. Do Not Disturb is on. Opening up my ginormous file. Oh, oh, there it is. Look at this. Like it just, it just keeps going like three pages, four pages, like <sighs> it's a lot, it's a lot. So my microphone is in the wrong place. I have just been talking for like 10 minutes and my microphone is in the wrong place. <laughs> so I can only hope that in this position, 
right in front of me. It's now better because I forget that I have a directional microphone and if I'm not talking straight into it, it will only put sound in one of your earphones, which isn't ideal. Um, arguably, I want, you know, both earphones to have my voice going into them. I don't know where I was going with this. Anyway, regardless, I've moved it now, let's go. <laughs> let's, let's start this again. This is going well, isn't it? First video of 2023, and I've already fudged it up. Be a guest, be a guest. Do 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 and we'll provide the rest. At sunset on Samhain, on Samhain? On Samhain? Wrong bleeding holiday. What season do I think it is? Honestly, I don't know. This is what I mean. My entire last three months has just flown by. Last time I checked, it was August. It's not August anymore. And then it was October and now it's not October. Now it's fucking January. How did that happen? <sighs> in bulk. I'm on in bulk. We got this. Yes, we do. Okay. Just need to psych myself up there. This is how this works. I have to keep taking breaks when I'm filming because like I cannot stay this focused for this amount of time. I have to stare at a point on my camera. If I stare at the lens, it's like I'm staring into your soul. And I don't like doing that. But equally, if I look at the viewfinder, it's obvious. Like I'm looking at you, I'm looking at the viewfinder. Like it's so obvious. I have to focus somewhere in the middle. And that way I kind of look like I'm looking at you, but I'm not staring into your soul. But the problem is that kind of hurts my eyes after a while. Okay. <sighs> that was loud. I apologize. I just peeked my microphone by doing that. Da, 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 da. If you, if you do, oh, I can't, the light is right behind the camera. <laughs> it hurts to look at it. <laughs> Okay. Oh my goodness. I'm only halfway through. I legit feel like I've been talking for hours and technically I have. It's 58 minutes that I've been talking for so far. Oh, it's a lot. It's a lot of talking. This is why these videos are really, really tiring. I love videos where I can sit and just talk. <laughs> That's why my live streams are so long because I can just sit and talk. But unfortunately, these educational videos, I cannot just sit and talk. I have to like read a script and like make sure I hit all of my bullet points. And I always go off on tangents and I skip them and I forget what I'm doing. And then I have to add bits in at the end. You know how it is. If you see my bloopers before, you know how it is. Mm -hmm.